This lesson is part of a 7th grade geometry review created by Andrea Earl for the Smart Exemplary Educator program. Topics for review will include similar figures, Pythagorean theorem, perimeter of irregular figures, area of irregular figures, and volume of solids. Quick review, area of a circle. Here we have a circle. What piece of information? <laughs> what piece of information do we need in order to find the area of a circle? What do we need? Oh. Uh, circumference. To find area? Oh, radius. Radius. So here's the radius. So go ahead. In your notes, mark the radius of your circle. What's another way we can write this formula? Go ahead. Um, um, area equals pi r squared. Right. Pi r squared. There's the radius squared. Okay. The last one we need to do is the trapezoid. So let's start by selecting the trapezoid. What's one thing you notice about a trapezoid? Okay, maybe you've noticed that the top and bottom are not the same length. Length of the top side is 4 centimeters, and the length of the bottom is 8 centimeters. Okay? Let's put this up here. What we really want to know is the length of the trapezoid itself. So what we do is we add, we add the top, which is L1, and the bottom, L2, together. So we have 4 plus 8, and then we divide that by 2. That actually gives us this number right in here in the middle. Okay? So now we have the length. So the formula is area equals... The, the length, and then we need to do, or the base, times the height. And the height is going to be this amount right here, which is 5 for today. Okay? Times 5. Okay, go ahead and calculate the area of that trapezoid, and then we'll do a couple more. Let's go ahead and exchange the page a little bit, and finish working out the problem. So we have area equals... 12 divided by 2 times 5. And in this case, 12 divided by 2 is 6 times 5. And the area of is 30 centimeters squared. Okay? Very good. Now let's go ahead and capture that. So I'll put that on the blog so you can check it later. Oops. What happened? Let's go ahead and capture that. Okay, we've already found out the area of the rectangle for, for F. Now it's time to find the area of the shape for G. Now, is that a normal shape you see? No. No, but you can deconstruct it, divide it into pieces. So, let's look at it. What shape is that? A triangle. triangle. What shape is that? Triangle. triangle. And what's this shape? Rectangle. Square. Rectangle. Oh. Is it a square? Well, I'll see. No. no. Yeah, see, what's the length here? 30 centimeters. What's the length? Okay, and what's the width? 20. Uh, 20. 20. So what's the area of that square? Um, 20. Area equals um, 20, 20 times, 30. times 30. Whoops, 20 times 30, and you get? 600. 600 what? Square. Square. Centimeters. Square. Square. Good. Now, Donnie asked, he said, how do you know that that's the area, that that's the width? But if you look at this line, you can, it doesn't really matter where I put the 30, if I put it at the top or the bottom, it's still the width of the rectangle. Okay? Okay, now let's talk about whether these two triangles are similar. And what did we say triangles needed to have or shapes needed to have to be similar? They need corresponding sides. So let's look at the small triangle and the large triangle. What are the two measurements that we look at? Base and height. Okay, so let's look at the base. What is the base of the large triangle? It's x, 
and the base of the small triangle is 16. There's our corresponding sides. The height of our small triangle is 12, and the height of the large triangle is 15. And what can we do to find the missing side? We can set up our proportion, and then we can cross multiply. So here's the first proportion, here's the second proportion, make them equal to each other, and then we can cross multiply. And that'll give us x, or the missing side. Now another question that you asked was, can we change the order? Does it matter if the base or the height is on top? And as someone mentioned, the answer is no, it really doesn't matter. We could switch them. So if we switch the base here, move it down, we switch the height and move it up, what do we then have to do to the x and the 15? We switch them as well. So let's just flip them over. And of course, if we flip the height and the base of the large triangle, we also need to flip the height and the base of the small triangle. And then you see our proportions are still the same. Now we said the Similar triangles of corresponding sides, what else do they have? That's right, corresponding angles. So, let's look at that and let's prove it. If I take the small triangle, watch carefully. What do you notice about those angles? Keep watching. Keep watching. that out of the way. Oops. Keep watching. Watch what else happens. Look at this triangle. Is it similar? Yes. Is that triangle similar? Yes, it is also. You're right. In fact, it's congruent. It's congruent. It's exactly the same as the large triangle, as the first large triangle that we had. All of these angles, all of these triangles are in fact similar because they have exactly the same angles.